Ladies and gentlemen, would everyone please stand for the pledge? At this time, I'd like to introduce Peter Pahala, commander of the Shopa Davy American Legion Post 6082 Peckville, PA. Peter is a Vietnam veteran and served the United States Air Force from 1966 to 1969 with the rank of E2. I'd like to thank you for your service. Step up to the podium. The floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Would you please stand and face the flag of our country? And we're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance at this point. Present arms for any veteran in the room. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Can you please have a moment of silence for all those that lost their lives in these two last mass shootings. Please keep their family and friends and everyone that they meant something to in our thoughts and prayers in the coming days. Um, it's a very scary time and I just hope that it would stop and just people could just care for each other instead of destroy one another. Just a moment of silence. Thank you. Tracy. I'd like to bring this Wednesday, September 4th, 2019, Board of Commissioners meeting to order 10 a.m. Commissioner's Conference Room at 123 Wyoming Avenue at the Lackawanna County Government Center at the Globe. to make a motion for the approval of the minutes for past meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Jeez, okay. Roll call. Uh, Commissioner Nateriani. Yes. Commissioner Cummings. Yes. Co Commissioner O'Malley. Yes. Thank you. Proclamation presentations. Suicide Prevention Awareness Month 19-0220. Do we have someone here from the, would you like to come up to the podium? Let's talk about what you have going on and what's going on Saturday and what it means to the citizens of Lackawanna County. Okay, Saturday we have our annual Suicide Prevention and Remembrance Walk at the courthouse. This is our sixth year. Um, last year we've had 47 identified suicides in Lackawanna County. Uh, and I say identified because those that data is always underreported. Um, and unfortunately this year, we have a number of new teams. One is for a 14-year-old boy that died last year. I've recently come to the commissioner's work group meeting asking for a Lackawanna County Task Force. Um, our organization is a Northeast Suicide Prevention Initiative. And we're a very small group of people, and we do what we can uh, in September to help um, participate in the Suicide Prevention Month. F we've given a number of books to 11 libraries in Lackawanna, Wayne, and Luzerne counties on bereavement, helping people who've lost someone to suicide. Um, we are always available for free trainings, um, and a big part of that is postvention, unfortunately. Um, and so that's what we have going on to help celebrate Pennsylvania's Suicide Prevention Month. The um, Saturday event, what time? Is there a registration or is it just like you just... You could register, reg register um, before the walk, but you don't have to. You could register at the time of the walk. It starts at 9 o'clock. The walk itself starts at 10 o'clock. Commissioner Cummings? Well, thank you for coming in to address this topic. I know it's difficult for uh, to talk about, but um, one of the things that, you know, when I was looking at your statistics and I, I talked about it with you in the meeting is that the spring and summer months seem to be a higher rate of suicide than the holidays, which I always thought the holidays uh, were... Unfortunately, no one the knows the why, and it's not just one reason for suicide, but it does seem to happen nationally, even mostly in the spring. Well, thank you for pointing that out. Thank so, you. 
Um, you know, I don't know why. that That's just an interesting thing. That a I lot hear. of people think it's around the holidays, but it's not. Yeah, I, I was always under yeah. the impression that it was around yeah. the holidays. There's a number of theories, but there's no uh, certainty on why uh, it happens in the spring sometimes. And we know suicide is the result of a, a medical complication in the brain, um, but we don't know what causes some people to have that and what causes other people to get through whatever they're going through um, without that. And there is a theory that your brain uh, is more inflamed, I guess, inflammation, just like allergies in the spring. Mm -hmm. um, and suicide, most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time it's an impulsive act. Although some people plan their deaths months in advance and they kind of fight that feeling fight that urge and then something happens and they attempt and sometimes Intruder. succeed yeah well, thank you for your work i appreciate you coming in thank you commissioner Thierry. just thank you very much for coming in thank you it's uh it, it, the devastation they leave on their families behind them is is what's so sad also not just to themselves and this little 14 year old it's all his co-students yeah his peers peers his family uh it, you know it's a, a permanent solution to a temporary problem yeah. and it yeah. just isn't you know it's it if there's a way to, to attempt to stop it it certainly would be yeah. worth the effort well, awareness to. is the start of it yes it is so thank great, you great job and thank you thank you um it takes the heart out of a family absolutely it changes it I've, I've dealt with it i understand and it's um you know it's you know someone can be in an accident somebody can be murdered it's horrible to say someone could die from a mm -hmm. disease but when suicide it's just so yeah you know it's that you know everybody questions why didn't why? anybody notice yes. yeah. you know and and I'd, I'd like to say to the viewer answer look for signs sometimes there isn't signs you know you're that. absolutely right but, um, but there is signs, you know, I mean, see if someone's yeah. not doing their usual, you know, their usual stuff. Yes. You mean if they're not, um, if they're unhappy, yeah. you know, try, try to get to the root of something, you know what I mean? And don't be afraid to ask yeah. someone if you're concerned about them. Don't be afraid. You're not going to put it in their head. Don't be afraid to say, I'm worried about you. Have you ever thought of ending your life? It, it, it's really, really scary. And like I said, for, you know, any family, you know, to go through it, you know what I mean? It's outrageous. It's horrible. And you know, I mean, it's it's like any other loss, but it's just so different because everybody blames themselves because you know, what I mean, everybody thinks of the last time they spoke to that individual, and they You're say, well, what, right. what did I say or what didn't I say or what I should have said, or you just didn't even notice. Yeah. So how would you know? And we're just we're just really uh, talking about it. So I appreciate this. And the more we talk about it, hopefully, um, the more people will ask for help. Even people who've lost someone to suicide. Um, their friends, their coworkers, they don't know what to say. So frequently they say nothing, which is very hurtful. And so please keep that in mind if you know someone who's lost someone to suicide, especially this month. Say, you know, I know that this is Suicide Prevention Month and I just want to tell you that I was thinking of you. And there's like a lot of families that look at it like it's, you know I mean, it's, they just don't want it to be out there. Yeah. You know, and the truth of the matter is, you know, I mean, there's a lot of families that have dealt with it within our county. Yes. So, you know what I mean? There's a lot of hurt out there. Yes. So, but I would like to thank you for everything you do. And so, um, walk starts at 9 a.m., Lackawanna 9 County Courthouse. Yes. What time yes. should everybody start getting there? Around 8.30-ish? Quarter well, to 9 o'clock is fine. 9 o'clock? We have some speakers. This year we have Joe Dombrowski, who's a Scranton policeman. He's part of the uh, community intervention team. Very committed member. Um, and he lost his stepson to suicide two years ago, and so he's going to talk about his heartbreak of being able to help others and have to deal with it himself. Because, oh, I mean, it's, there's, you have to have a coping mechanism, you know. The, uh, everybody's gotta, the family's got to rely on each other or friends or absolutely. whoever. Absolutely. But, Kathy, thank you. We have a proclamation. Whereas suicide is a leading cause of death in the United States and in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, one person dies by suicide, I didn't realize this, every four hours, making the second leading cause of death for the ages 15 to 34, and the fourth leading cause of death in ages 35 to 54. Listen, anybody out there that's, I mean, it's scary. 
wake go to bed don't don't hurt yourself you know there's always another day yes. the, the next day yeah. could be so much better yeah. than the day that you had just been through and i think that's why i think a lot of people say place i gotta stop right now because if no one else understand that, that you're going to do this you're the only one that could stop it yourself absolutely get right. go to sleep and wake yeah. up the next day and i mean the whole day might be a whole different better place to be and i'd like to thank you for your service and also acknowledge the number of veterans we lose also to suicide. Whereas nearly five, mil five million people in the United States have lost their lives, one to suicide, and each member of our community is valued and irreplaceable. And taking, talking openly about the stress and psychological health building trust reduces the barriers and the cares and enables early intervention and local statewide suicide prevention efforts should be developed and encouraged to the maximum extent possible. And it's true, like you said, it's something that we should all talk about. Yes, and if you feel absolutely. that there's a loved one that may be on the edge or just something maybe just seem different about them ask them see how is everything okay can i help you can can i be there Perfect. do you need someone to talk to just be there that's what this is about whereas northeast suicide prevention initiative is committed to organization organizing 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 a run entirely by volunteer and survive survivors who believe suicide can be defeated a reinforcement of their dedication to the annual gathering for Share the Journey Walk, bringing together smiles, coworkers, neighbors, and students who have been affected by the terrible tragedy, support the journey of healing. Now, therefore, no, whereas the mission for Northeast Suicide Prevention Initiative is to prevent suicide in our community through advocacy, collaboration, and education, all funds raised in Northeast in the Northeast are used for programs, clinical training, management skills, community education on suicide prevention support for healing and grief activities for survivors. Now, therefore, we, Patrick M. O'Malley, Jerry Notarian, Lorraine A. Cummings, commissioners of the County of Lackawanna, Pennsylvania, hereby acknowledge and proclaim September 4th, 2019, on behalf of our 214,000 citizens as Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. And to the teenagers that are out there that might have a relationship or something goes wrong, please don't ever hurt yourself. You, your life is too short. You have one life to live. You need to live on. Your family needs you and everyone cares for you. And this goes for anyone who may be contemplating suicide. There's always a better day coming up. Please just hang on and, and be there for your family because when you leave your family, you leave a terrible void. Absolutely. I'd just like to add, too, that the state this year has started a state suicide prevention task force, um, the first of its kind, and they are going to be having listening sessions around the state. So I'm hoping that Northeast PA, I hope it's Lackawanna County that hosts that lift, listening session. If we could be part of it, you let us know what we have to do. We will help out because Thank this you. is a horrible tragedy. And I don't think any of the Board of Commissioners really realized how many people in every four hours. That's really concerning. Yeah. I didn't know we didn't have a task force here. Yeah. I didn't realize it either. Yeah. We're the only one in Northeastern PA that doesn't have a task force. Wayne County has an active task force, Luzerne. Susquehanna has a co-funded uh, coordinator through Lackawanna Susquehanna Mental Health. But Lackawanna doesn't have anything. If there's any way that the Board of Commissioners could help you through committee relations or whatever we Thank can you. do, we're here to try to keep all of our citizens alive Thank and well. Thank you very so. much. And I will mention that at the walk. Okay. Thank you. Would you like to come forward? Thanks, Trace. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. No, no problem. No, no, no. I understand. It's a horrible thing. Take a step over this way. Perfect. All right, here we go. Perfect. Here we look at the can and smile. We'll take a couple of them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let us know. Thanks, Trey. Let us know. Thank you. Oh, shit. That's your hand. So every, anyone in the viewing audience that would like to come out to the walk, it's this coming Saturday, uh, September 6th, 9 a.m. at the Lackawanna County Courthouse. Come on out. Okay, 19-0221, Commissioner Cummings. 
Um, we have a vintage kitchen here today as our small business spotlight. And who's here? Hi, I'm Sandy Graham, and Hi, Sandy. I own Vintage Sandy. Kitchen. Thanks for coming in. Tell us a little Thank bit about you. your business. Well, we're having our grand opening this oh, Friday, nice. um, during First Friday. We are cooking and lifestyle classes, so we do cooking classes, children, adults alike. We have different themes, different ingredients. Um, it varies every month. We do birthday parties, and there's a variety of themes for children, but we also do private parties, corporate events, um, adult birthday parties, whatever the occasion, we handle that. There's also some um, sewing classes mostly. We do classes called a creative cafe, which is kind of a little crafting or some kind of art with some food with, um, that's more of a demonstration. Most of our classes, the majority of our classes are all hands-on. <coughs> nice. nice. And we were in Clark Summit for three years and are just making the move to downtown Scranton on Linden Street. We're happy to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. Commissioner Cummings. Uh, congratulations, and what made you start this business? Is this something that you're- It was something I thought about for years and years and years. And finally, um, sometimes if you have that life moment, you say, now's the time to do it. And I did it. I'm not looking back This now. was the moment. It was great. It was the moment. <laughs> it happened. And well, congratulations. No regrets. Thank we're you. We're proud to have you here. And thank you so much for uh, being an inspiration to others. Thank you. Thanks. Commissioner Terry, any? What uh, are some of the types of things you cook? I'm very interested in eating. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we have all kinds. So, um, we do some things like we'll do vegeta vegetarian or vegan classes or even sometimes just meatless classes. Um, but we do classes, one of the most popular, pasta is always a popular class. So um, that's popular. Sometimes we have a class called bourbon and honey and ev all the foods are made with you. bourbon and honey. <laughs> that's quite popular too. But um, you name it, we, we try it. Sometimes it's, the people, our customers, who call up and say, hey, can you do such and such? And they fuel the idea. So it's kind of what the public wants, but kind of things that I find, particularly food trends. So I pay attention to that. But you're learning a lot of classic skills. But to keep it trendy, to keep it new and fresh, the the classes rotate around this time of year the, with the farmers market open it's got to be yeah. wonderful that's it's very good and as we get to the holidays people want to learn to make things like homemade gnocchi homemade ravioli so we we fill those classes too Sandy so you're coming you're down in downtown Scranton you're at 317 Linden Street yes what's the phone number website the Facebook. website is www dot vintage kitchen cooking classes dot com the schedules up there there's also a blog that runs up there so sometimes there's some cooking techniques or recipes um, that go with that and the phone number is five seven zero eight five one eight five two one I think this is great um, so you do like what this is really a lot of it's like which regular necessary skills like cooking yeah yeah for but, some, and some. really the kids are super interested so the trend um, of the cooking shows that are for kids right now have the kids interested. One of the things I hear all the time, and, and it happens all the time, I might step away a little bit. The kids are eating what they made. I might be you know, tidying up a bit. And you always hear kids say, boy, food tastes better when you make it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. That's it. We did our job. We also have, we have um, two 4-H groups that run out of Vintage Kitchen that we host there. So they're getting more skills also. We're trying to spread it around to the kids. It's it's good because, you know what I mean, like, one, if you try to save money and you're, you, mean, you don't have a lot of money in your pocket, it's cheaper to make your own food at home. And it's family. You know, you can involve everybody in the family in preparation when you're making something for dinner. Yeah. You really can. And I think that that's, our country's got away from the old days where everybody sat around a kitchen table at night. That's for sure. And, you know, like today, like I see it with my kids. If we sit down to eat, my wife will tell them to put their phones away. 
You know what I mean? Like, we didn't have that world 30, 40 years ago. It wasn't like that. No, you didn't answer the phone. Or, or go, yeah, and there was only one phone in the house. But I remember, like, going to Grandma's. Like, every Sunday, you went to Grandma's house. And mm-hmm. she'd have the driest roast beef there ever was. But we would <laughs> all be there. You know what I mean? That was part of that Sunday. It was the way it was. But my mom cooked every day. And you know what I mean? We would, I'm not going to say there was, I had six siblings, and my mom and dad served games. But sometimes we didn't all eat together. But, like, there would be at least three or four of us at a time, usually. So, like, you know, I mean, we were together all the time. And I think it really mattered because I, I think it's something that I think our country's getting away from. And I think it's something our family should do. Try to eat together at least two or three times a week or more if you're able to. You know, because you can really, you can talk about a lot of different things. You're enjoying a meal. You know what I mean? It's a, it's an actual hour and some minutes, you know, I mean, you sit down, relax and eat and talk and enjoy each other's company. And the research will say that at least two meals a week, that that cusp is two meals a week will help keep teenagers out of trouble and that's research based and really two meals two out of seven days you know if you do two dinners is is that cusp for for quality time preferably more but when a few generations have gotten away from cooking Mm -hmm. so we did see that slump in the family meals so I think with the interest that the kids have and the kids that come in, I think we're going to see it back. I think the kids are going to lead us in this charge, which is awesome. I like when I kids take the lead. It really is. And I think, it, like you said, it's something, and it makes you self-sufficient. You should be able to know how to cook for yourself if you have to. Yes. And, you know, I mean, you shouldn't have to rely on anybody else. But just the family sitting down at the table, I think that's what means the most. And we end our classes, um, even the adult classes, so the classes are hands-on you're cooking and then we end up we finish with a community meal so everyone in the class sits together to eat so So that's it's kind of a nice i know that there have been some friendships made at our place and people have become friends and then they come back for more classes nice so you have sewing classes too yes that's something my god my grandmother was a person or my mom was the go-to person for that there's nobody does that today and that's just to sew a button Right. You, you go to the dry cleaner, it's five bucks to get a button. So it, it's like, expensive, so. <laughs> even to him. Yeah. If you're short. Like my grandma used to have all of her pants and stuff. Yeah. So those repairs and, and again, just that cost saving, um, making do of what we have and appreciating what we have. Well, thank you for everything that you do. Thank and you. Uh, Commissioner Cummings has a certificate for you today. Oh, thank, thank you. you for coming in. Uh, so today, in, uh, in, we offer a certificate of recognition. The County of Lackawanna Board of Commissioners does hereby recognize Vintage Kitchen in honor of achieving the designation of a small business spotlight in Lackawanna County, given this fourth day of September 2019 by Commissioner Patrick O'Malley, Commissioner Jerry Notariani, and myself. Commissioner Cummings, come on up. Congratulations. I think it's great. Thanks. Thank you very much, because I think that's a that's a business we absolutely yeah. need in our community, <laughs> teaching people how to cook. Um, we have Kirk Camoni, Director of Convention and Visitor Center Bureau, for an overview on this great fall visitor's guide. I think it's great. You got Halloween theme, you got the Scranton, you got the pumpkins. I had an opportunity to go through it. Um, great. I Let's appreciate talk it. about it. Uh, we do four seasonal uh, guides along with an annual guide that covers the whole year. This guide will, our fall guide will cover September, October, and November. It talks about some of the great things we have going on for the fall season. Um, it does highlight, uh, as Commissioner Terriani mentioned, all of the uh, markets and, and the taste of the season that we have with the, the cideries and the mills and the The farmers markets that we have throughout the area in the fall they are a very large attraction for us and do a great job of bringing people in it talks about a lot of the different events that we have um, and again outlines all of the attractions the shopping 
and and our wonderful dining that we have and it's it's seasonal specific uh, we're working very hard on our upcoming annual guide that will come out in January and then we also are very proud uh, to announce that the we've signed the Lionel train convention uh, for 2021 it'll be July 16th to the 21st in 2021 and bring in over 1200 people to Lackawanna County to come to the Lionel train convention it'll have uh, public aspects to it which we will promote uh, but it, it's a, a very large get for Lackawanna County and for our CVB uh, we went aggressively after this this group they're normally in major cities um, in Chicago Seattle are two of the most recent cities they've been in and it was very nice that we flew them in and one of the things that we heard before they made their decision was that they've never been in an area that treated them like they wanted them here so much and that is a testament to the businesses and the attractions that we have in Lackawanna County we did a tour for these folks and brought them around to all of our different uh, attractions and not only are we perfectly built for a train convention with Steamtown, the trolley museum and a lot of our other things but the Houdini museum uh, the coal mine tour everywhere we brought them they couldn't say enough about the people and, and how they were treated in Lackawanna County and that goes a long way into being able to get these types of events here so we're very proud of uh, landing that it's a very large conference and convention that we'll be bringing to Lackawanna County that, that's fabulous. What a, what a great great idea to bring the convention here. Like you said, you have Steamtown. We have our mine museum with the trolley museum, everything else. This is a perfect venue for them to come into Lackawanna County. We're going after groups aggressively. Um, smaller ones, we just signed a for next year a matchbook convention. Uh, folks that collect uh, and trade the old matchbook covers and matchbooks and that'll them. be bringing in about 355 people to Lackawanna County in June um, I'm sorry August of 2020 so you know we're, we're out there constantly at different uh, you're showcasing shows Lackawanna County doing the trying to just show people the great things there are to do in Lackawanna County um, the guide has a little bit of everything that we have in Lackawanna County. It really shows showcases what we have going on. You and your staff are doing an incredible job. Really appreciate it. Couldn't do it without our, we have a wonderful board and then also the support that you all have shown us. Uh, really appreciate that and we'll keep doing what we're doing. Beautiful. Commissioner Cummings? It's a great uh, book. Who, who printed this? We printed it at Scranton Printing, uh, and we, we put it together as a combination of my office and sweet advertising. It is. It's a, it's a perfect book. How did you, um, who, who got to, like, do they have to pay to go in here to advertise? Well, we this? do have partners, and partners are guaranteed uh, to be in our guides and on our website and featured. Um, you do not have to be a partner to show up there. We, we market Lackawanna County in the, in the way that we feel best showcases it. But if you're a partner with us, you're guaranteed inclusion. What and we have all different levels of a, a partnership. So for instance, a local a Lackawanna County restaurant can partner with the CVB for $100 a year. And that would guarantee you a listing in our guide on our brand new website. Um, and then we do social media posts. Uh, and many other ways to try to, to highlight the, the restaurants that we have in Lackawanna County as we see it as a major strength uh, for us. Attractions are at a different level, so the, say the, the Rail Riders, for instance, or Live Nation is a higher rate than a local uh, uh, museum uh, based on attendance. But the only way to be guaranteed inclusion is to be a partner. So how, do you, how would somebody that's watching this out there that wants to be a partner know if how to do that? If they go to our website at visitnepa.org or contact us at 1-800-22-WELCOME, uh, they can ask for Kirk Kimone and I will help them become a partner immediately. We're constantly working on that. I carry them with me, and so does my staff. Anytime we're anywhere in Lackawanna County, let's, we're trying to sign people up. Let's talk about where the visitor center is right now because we've moved. 135 Jefferson Avenue. Yes, we moved, and it is beautiful. Uh, Two anchor hotels there? <laughs> we do. We're right in between the Radisson and the Hilton. Uh, we couldn't be happier with the location. We, get, we see more foot traffic, people coming in from the hotels, asking for information. Um, but realistically, in this day and age, while our office is wonderful, our, our website and our online presence has become, 
you know, how folks interact with us and, and what they use as a visitor center. So it becomes even more important that we have a, a great presence there. So we've expanded our social media over the last two years. We've more than quadrupled the amount of followers we have uh, on our, our social media. And again, uh, we relaunched the website. And a website for something like us is never finished. We're constantly developing it, making, putting more things into it, diving deeper, adding events. Um, and pages to it. It's it's a, a never-ending process, but we're very proud of it. It's a project at work all the time. Absolutely. The time. Commissioner Notary, any? Kurt, you've just been doing a phenomenal job, and keep up the good work. And I very I'm much sure appreciate that, that. Continue to grow. I can't say enough about my staff and our board, though. I can't take really much credit at all, but I do appreciate it. Yep. Um, with that being said, how about our rail riders? Now this is something this the, matters to us. You know, you work the, for the Rail Riders for numerous champions. years. What does this mean to our community? If well, we the can... Division Champions means more games. It means it's going to bring people in from the, those other teams, hopefully. Uh, while attendance doesn't normally really kill it at, at the playoff games, there are no season tickets there. So we have to remember that even if they get 3,000 people into the ballpark, those are 3,000 fresh tickets that they're bringing in. And the economic impact to our area is very large. Those visiting teams stay at hotels, they eat food, that's more food and, and things that the rail riders everything. will be buying. So it definitely impacts and brings brings money into our area. And then the excitement and the local pride never hurts. Uh, you know, between that and next year we're hosting the, the All-Star Game, there's a lot to be excited about. On, with Which, Kurt, isn't that a huge event? Like, that's like, do you have to be a special stadium to be chosen? A couple years ago we had the, the AAA Championship, which is is not as anywhere near as large an event because it's two teams being represented and you don't even know until the week before what the teams are with the triple a all-star game you have representatives from every team in major league baseball so whether you're an orioles fan a yankees fan a red sox fan which we know in our area we have a, a, an eclectic group of fans we're predominantly yankee fans but we have a lot of phillies fans followed up by red sox and mets fans um, and pirates fans all of them will be able to see their future stars play at the stadium. And it's a multi-day event. The Home Run Derby is now almost as big an event as the, the game. It's a, it's a big deal for Lackawanna County to get that event. Um, and again, it takes a long time for it to cycle through with all the other teams. But anytime we have an opportunity to hold something like that, we should jump all over it. This is a big thing for Lackawanna very, County. Very, very big. And it's nationally covered and televised. Getting back to the uh, division champs. Now they're going to go into best out of five. They'll play best out of five. Oh, they're on the road now. They head out now. First two games in Durham. It'll be Last tough. Last three back here with us. As needed, yes, sir. Uh, it's always tough to start out on the road with those first two. I, I've never agreed with the International League on how they do it, but hopefully they can get one out of two in, in Durham and come back and close it out here. Beautiful. It's always an exciting time here, especially for the people that put so much time in up on the mountain. They work long long hours and they work very hard and and to be rewarded with the playoffs and hopefully a championship it, it's a great way to finish it yeah this could be the second time in what three years if it goes right right correct this would be great it's great for the community so please make sure everyone gets out there this coming week there's gonna be three games back home against durham cheer on our rail riders hopefully we'll get the, the felatisi uh, festival in old forge oh this yeah felatis is this week yep they celebrate their culture with wonderful italian food i will be going for the first time so i'm excited oh you're gonna love their great sauce and that's uh i can't wait that's friday saturday sunday yes sir friday saturday sunday so make sure you get down to old forge and um enjoy it's a great weekend it really is thank you all kurt thank you for all the hard work and thank your staff thank you Okay, opportunity for public to address the board on agenda items only. Okay, ordinance second reading, 19-0209. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, this is an ordinance requiring the disposition of settlement monies received by the county to be directed to reimburse actual costs to the county and the remainder of the funds to be directed to provide for services for treatment of drug addiction and rehabilitation programs. Whereas Lackawanna County is a third class county existing pursuant to the laws of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And whereas the Lackawanna County Board of Commissioners does have the authority to set the procedure for the management of the fiscal affairs of Lackawanna County pursuant to the Lackawanna County Home Rule Charter and Pennsylvania County Code. And whereas 
The Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County authorized Lackawanna County to stand as a plaintiff in litigation against 14 pharmaceutical companies seeking reimbursement for the actual costs and other damages suffered by the county as a result of the pharmaceutical company's failure to warn of the highly addictive nature and dangers of the long-term use of prescription opioid medications. And whereas the Board of Commissioners believes it to be in the best interest of the residents of Lackawanna County to enact the following legislation. Number one, all settlement monies realized by Lackawanna County, whether through settlement or court judgment, in the civil case caption Lackawanna County versus Purdue Pharma L P E T A L, filed with the Court of Common Pleas of Lackawanna County to term and number 2017 CV 5156 shall be directed to reimburse the county for the actual costs to the county in addressing the opioid crisis and the remainder of the settlement proceeds being directed exclusively towards providing services for treatment of drug addiction and rehabilitation programs. Number two, the provisions of this ordinance are severable. If any section, clause, sentence, part, or provision of this ordinance shall be determined to be illegal or invalid by any court or competent jurisdiction, shall this decision shall not impair or affect the remaining terms, sections, and clauses of this ordinance. This ordinance shall be in full force and effect 10 days after passage. Adopted at a regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County held today, September 4th, 2019. Commissioner Cummings. Um, I just had one question. This is, this is um, making it um, so that future administrations can't just take this settlement and spend it elsewhere. Um, but also my question is, I think you said that it's for future treatment as well, not just to reimburse Cor costs, correct, but it also stated, am I correct in that or not? That's correct, yeah. Is what this ordinance does is it limits the ability of future administrations to just spend the money on general funding for fixing roads or something like that. In other words, the money would have to go towards reimbursing the county for costs we've already expended for you know addressing the opioid crisis to our social service agencies and additionally whatever funding other funding would then go and has to be dedicated towards use of treating additional op uh, funding in the future for opioid uh, addiction so John would this you know my concerns we discussed it this morning so uh, for the commissioners in general um, you know, you see statewide, you have the tobacco fund, which is supposed to be used for specific purposes, ends up being used for other purposes, okay? Uh, as a suggestion in talking to Commissioner Cummings, you know, treatment for these problems is never going to end. Yeah. It, it goes on and on and on. And I, I would just, we thought in talking about it that it might be more prudent, it's up to the commissioners, to limit it to just treatment going forward to deal with the problems, okay? The way that's worded, and this is my thoughts, it doesn't mean I'm 100% correct, but it, it almost could be used to plug, to plug a hole I in a budget. And I don't know that that's what every, everybody wants, okay? I think it's been done statewide with the tobacco funds, s similar thing. So you may wish to consider it to limit it for treatment. Um, if the fund sits there, well, so what? It's a reserve. I mean, that that's never been a bad thing, at least from the policy that I've understood with with this board of commissioners. That that helps in in many other ways in terms of financing and and and, and things like that. But given the nature of the problems, I, I don't see anything going away, and I see continued expenses going forward. That's that's yeah, John, that, the, that the, was our thoughts. And anyway. yeah, the reason we drafted it that way for reimbursement is the fact that <laughs> the, the, the lawsuit. lawsuit itself, Lackawanna County versus Purdue Pharmaceutical at all, seeks reimbursement. Yeah for money we've already expended okay we spent millions of dollars already to our social service agencies addressing this so it, the, the concern is there is that if we get a settlement part of that settlement is reimbursement x amount for reimbursement for what we've already spent and then additional funding for going forward you know if we limit it to just going forward you know it could interfere with our ability to settle yeah. it for past money that's already been settled I, I understand up, you know. that I, I i just i just view it differently that's all and and you know people could look at that and and i i don't see it as impacting the damages but but i'm that's i'm not handling that case either okay so uh you know I mean, yeah i understand respectfully yeah. Yeah. those were the thoughts that we had when we're looking at that's all 
Yeah, no, I understand that. And I, I appreciate uh, my two fellow commissioners and all their support on what I've been working on with this and all of our departments and all the newly created task forces and uh, groups out there uh, that have formed over the past three and a half, four years. Um, I really do appreciate you all looking into this and moving forward with some of the things that, you know, needed to happen that weren't happening. So, uh, Commissioner Natariani and Commissioner O'Malley, thank you for your support in, in this specific program that I've been trying to continually push. Uh, I do appreciate it. Um, you know, we saw uh, one of the, you know, nice things I saw anyway is uh, there was an opioid settlement um, and uh, we actually won our first our first battle uh, you know with Purdue and, and a few of other um, Johnson and Johnson I believe was involved yeah, in that as well um, so you know it, it is it is a uh, something that needs to be looked into and and we can win and you know it might not happen in, in our, obviously it's not going to happen in our time here as commissioners, but I hope it happens in my lifetime that I see a reimbursement coming to our uh, coffers for all the costs that we've dedicated um, to this issue. And, um, you know, I'm hoping that in the future we don't see as many people dying and, and that this is devastating to so many people. And, um, you know, I mean, I always talk about it, you know, with my family. I, I just... How many times can I say it? You know, it's just it's just something that is a constant issue. Once it starts, it's just a never-ending saga, and it's a lifetime of therapies and treatment, and you know, setbacks and you know, illnesses, and you know, literally. <laughs> I mean, it's just you wait for that phone call every single day. Which call are you going to get? Is it going to be a death or is it going to be a sentence? You just never know. You just never know. And it's a constant battle. Even after recovery, it's a constant battle. Uh, meetings and, you know, every day and constantly worried, is, it, is there going to be a setback? Even 20 years down the line, I've seen uh, people that have, you know, fallen back and, you know, 20 years after the fact and they die. <laughs> because, you know, they haven't been doing all of this in years and then they take a the last dose they remember mm -hmm. and it's just way too much for their system and they OD um, it's just it's just a saga that I just I pray every night and every day that it gets solved and um, you know I thank you again for all of your help and thank you Donnie and John for all of your input and all the help that you've been in, in this and uh, it really means a lot to me so yeah. thank you everyone I greatly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart I do I think also commissioner the the lawsuits not just like Awana counties but the ones across the country I think are starting to have an effect on doctors and hospitals and pharmaceuticals like and prescribing these drugs because now they're being held to account even even the pharmacies are getting sued now and I think they're starting to ease back mm -hmm. now on prescribing these opioids like they were doing before they were handing them all like candy before and I think now you're gonna see that trend changing uh, with, with you know liability increasing for these companies I really hope so, Donnie. I really do because it, it was disheartening for me, like I said at CCAP, to hear that they were still doing that and, you know, a physician actually being there and arguing with me saying it should be offered after a, a C-section. And I thought, <laughs> are you kidding? <laughs> like, so you want to hook moms up on this stuff? <laughs> Give me a break. And we were talking about infant, uh, you know, p infants being born <laughs> with withdrawal yeah, symptoms yeah. like and it's That's just true, amazing yeah. how they're, they're discussing it's this and you know it, it just it's so frustrating but yes you're right and they I see it do it is changing mm -hmm. but it's really up to people to say no you know to know because people trust their doctors they don't want to not trust their doctors and that's what I used to always hear See, see, lawyers and courts aren't always bad. Sometimes we affect good change. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank you for the work you've done here. But I have to tell you, um, and just for a little bit of a, uh, you know, uh, this isn't the only lawsuit that's coming. So just a uh, little teaser there. <laughs> but thank you, everyone, for all your help. And, and to the public, thank you for the work you're doing. Um, and... Uh, you know, go get them. You know, always, always stand up for your kids and yourself, and you know, don't let them talk you into doing a treatment that you don't feel comfortable with ever. Thank you.
Commissioner Terry? It's going where it should go, and that's a great thing. Um, this hits this hits home with just about with everybody in this room. Everyone in this room knows someone who overdosed or has an addiction, and um, too many families have had their hearts torn out. Too many families have gone to cemeteries and buried people way before their time, and um, this whole lawsuit was about fighting the pharmaceutical companies. And like the big thing is, we all we I know all of us up here in the dais and most of you in the audience grew up with you know I mean we believe in whatever our doctors would say. That's the way it was. The doctor said you went by that, and um, they were misled. And uh, we're making sure that those pharmaceutical companies know about it. And, you know, being one of the first counties in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to come forward, we had the guts to do this because of the fact that there were so many people losing their lives in our community and so many loved ones were being lost and so many families were being devastated beyond belief with no chance of ever coming back. Because when you lose a loved one in the middle of your family, it's, you know what I mean, some people are able to come back, some people aren't. It's just the way it is. So, you know, we were talking about addiction, we were talking about recovery, and um, I'd like to have Doug Long come up and say a few words. Doug has been helping people for decades. His sobriety is over 30-some years old, I think, at this point. And um, this matters. And like I said, the big thing for us was the concern of making sure that the money's absolutely went back to where they're supposed to go. Yes. So. Uh, I'm, like, I'm liking it's a small atmosphere a little bit. Um, it's really a tough topic for me. A lot of years on the firing lines. Uh, um, you know, I got asked to speak every five years. There's a world convention. My first one was in 1985 in Seattle, Washington. And uh, in 20, two, year 2000, I got asked to speak in front of 80,000 people at Minneapolis, Toronto World Convention. And then 2020 now is Detroit. And I've never missed a world convention for a recovery group. And um, this here is probably my second biggest opportunity to speak in front of everybody here on how important it is. Yes, being on the firing lines and watching um, what goes on, it's definitely gonna happen. It's gonna be a, like a tobacco settlement. I'm very much involved in it. I very much do a lot of reading on it. Um, I'm very much dedicated my life to it. Some of the tragedies we had in the county that I was involved in was the Frankie Bonacci. He had five years before he got murdered. And uh, I was a sponsor and been with them for five years since high school. So everyone's aware of me. Most people here are aware of me uh, through uh, dedicating that time with Frankie. Um, just recently, I was really involved with our Carol and Janelle's. That would be Janelle's restaurant. I was on <sighs> the phone with his mom this morning. So uh, my first recovery house, it wasn't a sober house. Uh, when the trickling of opioid addiction, I did not know what it was. I'm sober 35 years. I'm sober since high school. Um, I needed some tools. Who would ever believe that Dougie be standing here at the county working as a mailman 35 years ago? Um, I knew enough then, though, I needed some tools in a recovery program in 1978 uh, when I picked up my first drug. Then again, it was rock and roll, Led Zeppelin. We all know those days, you know. And um, my family um, I could speak openly about it. I didn't speak openly about it for uh, years until I started uh, getting involved with the knockout addiction for boxing. But during the Frankie Bonacci, no one knew I was in recovery for 35 years. And uh, so um, I don't want to take anybody in a quick roundabout, but it's very, very personable to me. Uh, so what we're doing here is very, very important to the county. It's the most important thing we can do. And being on the cutting edge and having you guys be a part of it makes me so feel so good today when I leave. Uh, about seven years ago, I had a, a rental property. It was empty, and a lot of kids were starting to trickle down with the opioid addiction. I was very unaware of how obsessed it is and how the addiction could lie and change somebody's human being, change the thoughts of a young, a young person, and uh, control their mind to robbery, to uh, theft, uh, to recovery, and I had no aware of it, you know. Um, then I was learning about Suboxone, and all of a sudden I'm getting TV stole at my house. There was no such thing as recovery houses. I was just trying to help somebody needing rent. And um, I learned, and it started progressing with a lot of deaths for me and a lot of front lines with a lot of uh, parents. And then what happened with Frankie, uh, that's six years ago. Um, oh, and uh, I know what recovery did for me. And I, I, I'm here for a positive story, you know. And um, no matter what happens, I know recovery is the most important thing we could talk about today. 
I know what it did for me. I needed some tools, and I knew that as a young kid when I came in. It was just after high school. I had a drinking and drug problem, but I, I didn't have the tools from a guidance counselor, no sports or nothing. And it's very important that I tell my story here because the story we're telling here is uh, going to affect everyone, you know, and uh, the recovery and what you're voting on and the time you're putting forth, it is so detrimental that this does get passed. And uh, it would make me feel better because could you imagine me uh, with bags of heroin or dealing with kids that are stealing and it was a new obsession to me and I couldn't wrap my hands around it uh, because I'm in recovery and I think that everybody wants it but this opioid addiction controls and changes your being it causes our court systems uh, when I walk through I'm the mailman and I'll hear uh, Judge Brace talk about treatment this is our county that's doing a great job the, pu the public defenders will be in the hallway at Central Court that everybody's busy in their offices, but I hear them saying, you need recovery, you need treatment. I hear it up at the public defender's office, I hear it at Central Court, and I'm proud that everybody is speaking on the page, same page here at the county, because I see it right forehand. And I'm very proud of everybody. I'm proud of our public defenders. I'm proud of Judge Barace getting honored. And uh, we are a great community. And we could be the whole leader of what's going on here for treatment. And, um, you know, there's a positive story. I, I uh, spoke at Clearbrook. And a gentleman was leaving the building in the front row of the seat. And I went out in the hallway in front of about 100 <laughs> people at Clearbrook. And I brought this gentleman in. And I said, don't leave while I'm speaking. I said, let me finish my, my story. You may get one minute or one second out of it. And the other day, um, I've helped him now for seven years. And uh, he was in one of my uh, apartment houses for seven years. He's a Scranton cop now. And I'm staying in my deck the other day in North Scranton. And the cop car falls up. And it's Pat. I don't want to say his last name because I was told to get repercussions. And I walked over there. And I was so honored. I said, Pat, wow, this is a winning story for me. This is a success through recovery. Got one cop. He can offer assistance in his patrol car. He understands the other side of it. And I walked away back, staying in my deck. Man, what a feeling that was. You know, I had maybe a little tad with God, with recovery, with our community, to change somebody's life. You know, he drives away in the cop car. And I had a little bit of that. You know, a little bit of what God gave to me in recovery. And, um, and don't get too emotional about it, but, you know, losing uh, our challenge now, I worked with him for two years, and Everybody kind of knows the family from Old Forge. And um, I had hands on with him for two years. And um, it's tough with the families for me. Because, you know, I can't promise. We can't promise it's, it's, it's recovery. Whew. Why is it hitting me today? Whew. OK, so I talked to his mom this morning. I asked if I could talk about uh, Ange Janelle. You know, and uh, she said it would be wonderful uh, to mention him. He had two years of recovery relapsed very quickly and was left to die in, a, in his pickup truck at a lake not far from here and it's just so cruel the whole situation of death the way it's occurring with different people acting the way they are it's all controlled by the opioids and um, gets me furious to read the paper and have 38,000 pills you know from different local drug stores and I don't want to ch chat up numbers because I know them by heart could you imagine me you know, on the front lines being frustrated Damn right I'm frustrated. It's ridiculous. And everyone knew it was coming, and I saw it for seven years coming. It was a trickle effect for me. Then it was floodgates opening up, and then everybody was understanding and getting on board, you know? But we're nipping it in the bud. I'm very, very happy. And uh, please understand what recovery done for me is done. I just don't speak for me. I speak for a lot of local kids that have seven, eight years. Of course, when I came in, everybody was smoking cigarettes at the meeting, and I was the youngest in the area. I was only 19, turned 20, never had a legal drink, you know. And uh, But I knew what I needed. I needed tools, and I needed support, and I needed recovery to be talked about and having a peer group around me, and that happens in recovery. And I'm very sorry. I got whew, emotional on it. Um, it's National Awareness for Recovery. I'm involved in a recovery walk, if we could please talk about that. It's something that we can all get together in our community. Whew, I don't know why, sorry. Uh, if we can get all together Mark, in our recovery. Yeah. Uh, if, if, okay. I'm sorry about that. Go ahead, I, put what's up? up? Yeah, go. Uh, if we could get involved, we have a Scranton recovery walk this Sunday, September the 8th at noontime. 
and uh, we're meeting at the new meeting hall where re it's a recovery hall uh, by sheets and we're going to walk down to our new recovery bank which is awesome you know you can get information there it's awareness awareness is huge you know it means a lot the parents are grasping for straws some days and uh, right. to have the recovery walk and awareness is very important again uh, this was the second biggest moment in my life I know coming to the county and speaking I'm honored I would have never thought 35 years ago we would be doing and talking about getting help for recovery and allocating money I can't be more honest than, than I was tonight or today with everybody and I appreciate it honor the commissioners honoring our county and everything we all speak on the same voice recovery does work please keep the awareness out there it's Thanks. not a secret any longer Doug people are everybody wants to save everybody else now at this point it was always kept quiet. It was the obituary that just said died. Now they're saying it, and they're talking about it, and they let it be known. It was my daughter. It was my sister. It was my mom. It was my brother. It was my loved one. So it's out there. Well, it was a... It, used it wasn't to, for years. It used to be known as a heroin crisis before I got here. Three months before I got here, if you go back and look at the articles, it was called the heroin crisis. And then we started the task force and changed it. To opioid crisis because that's what it is and it's a manufactured crisis you know if they maybe if they put a picture of a, a needle and heroin on the listing of oxycontin people would understand what the hell we're talking about here because it's it's a drug that is derived from heroin <laughs> maybe if they understood that they would realize that they're taking poison you know I mean is your pain so severe that you want an addiction do you want to be addicted for the rest of your life on this pill? Mm -hmm. That's that's the question. Is it is it that much? Is it that severe that you can take the risk of, you know, putting your family through, watching you deteriorate in front of their eyes, having seizures and causing all kinds of havoc in your own life and watching you just destroy your own life? Is, is it worth that? Is is that pill worth? Is that pain? worth all that because it's going to happen that's that's the question and, and i'm i'm so proud of you thank you for coming in and oh, thank you thank okay, you thanks for, for congratulations Doug. all right thanks thank you commissioners thank you so much tony Johnny, want to talk? We'll speak. Talk a little bit. I'll pull the mic over, dear. Uh, first of all, commissioners, I'd like to thank you personally, and on behalf of the residents of Lackawanna County, for your support of the work of the Drug and Alcohol Office. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Tony Costa. I'm deputy director, and um, I've been in the field of addictions treatment now for 37 years. I began my career at the old Lackawanna County Detox Unit when it was a county program, and. Um, I don't want to drag this out too much, but I want to piggyback on something my, my associate Kathy said earlier. She used the word underreporting. Um, everyone, uh, the media has given a lot of uh, attention to the uh, opioid crisis. Uh, uh, one fact that a lot of people don't know the, the, to quantify it, in Lackawanna County every week, we're losing two people between the ages of 25 and 35 due to uh, either overdoses or drug-related causes. And to me, that's that's shocking. We, you know, young people in the prime of life. Uh, uh, it's it's it, we we cannot afford to continue to do that. And I very much appreciate the fact that you're taking the uh, initiative to per, uh, uh, pursue this, this settlement. Uh, we need the resources. In, in spite of all that we do, we're we're just overwhelmed. And. Uh, uh, it, uh, it, as far as the, uh, 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 I want to also compliment Attorney Fredrickson. I have known Don a number of years. We were involved in, in the early years of the Drug Court and uh, Act 53 treatment of minors. And, and there could, uh, uh, a lot of people probably don't know that he has, he's, he's been on the front lines too in, in the fight and, and uh, couldn't be a better person to be working on this. I appreciate that. Tony, what's the phone number if anybody needs any help to call? Okay, our phone number is area code 570. 963-6820 and we're, our, we're, our offices are located on the uh, fourth floor of this building here. Um, um, we're, 23 Wyoming Avenue. That's correct and uh, our, we're available 24-7. Tony thank you and thank you to your staff and tell Barb thank you for, thank you for being here today. Thank you again. Um, 
as everyone that's here today in the viewing audience can see that this was just, you know, the impact is so immense and we just want to make sure that this money is used properly and um, the next administration, the administration after that, make sure that it's earmarked for exactly what it's for to um, help save lives and uh, heal the hearts of a lot of families that have lost so much. Okay, Ordinance 261, Disposition of Opioid Settlement Monies. Can I have a second? Second. Roll call. Commissioner Terriani? Yes. Commissioner Cummings? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. Resolutions 19-0219. Thank you, Commissioner. This is approving the current payables. Be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby approve the following payables. Lackawanna County General Fund numbers 288310 through 288802, inclusive, totaling $2,697,869.75. Electronic fund transfers, including all payroll accounts, totaling $3,751,764.12. Controller DeBilio. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. All invoices on today's payable list is, have been approved and audited by our controller's office. Uh, there are no invoices related to the Attorney General's probe of the Lackawanna County Prison, thankfully. Um, there are um, a few invoices payable to United Neighborhood Centers of note. Um, I'll point them out on page four. There's two United Neighborhood Center invoices. Um, through the Clerk of Judicial Records and the Workforce Development, uh, page nine, there are, there's a couple of checks for um, Area Agency on Aging and Human Services Department, Homeless Assistant Program, and Homeless Assistance Hotel Services. And on page 12, another check through agent, Area Agency on Aging and Housing Justice Initiative. Uh, not on the list, however, is one check that we've been holding uh, for United Neighborhood Centers for $15,000 from back in June that uh, Attorney Fredrickson might want to have added to the list for today's vote. If, if the commissioners are in favor of, of uh, authorizing that check to be released, I think there was some discussion among you if you want to add that or not. That check, by the way, was for homeless supportive housing yes. okay. uh, program. Yeah, that wasn't through economic development, though, right? It was through no, uh, no, no it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Area agency no. on aging. That's correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's 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 not the agency itself mm -hmm. that I'm looking at. It's the department it's coming from. Just so you're aware, mm -hmm. um, because I've been uh, looking at some issues that we've had uh, in one of our departments, and for over almost two years now, and that's that's my concern. So. So it doesn't really have to do with the agency itself. Yes. So if we're okay with authorizing that check, we need to make a motion to approve the current payables and including that $15,000 check that we've been holding. So we just need to add that on as, as an addition. Okay. I'd like to make a motion approving current payables and... And the addition, releasing the additional $15,000 check that's been held since June. And releasing the $15,000 check that's been held from June. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Roll call. Yes. Commissioner O'Malley. Yes. 19-0210. Thank you, Commissioner. This is entering into a CWIS data sharing agreement. Be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby enter into a CWIS Child Welfare Information Solution Data Sharing Agreement with the Pennsylvania Department of Human Services for an electronic data exchange with 67 Pennsylvania County children and youth agencies. And here to speak on this resolution is our Director of Human Services, Bill Browning. Good morning, morning, Commissioners. Uh, this is uh, in regard to uh, our database. Uh, every county is required to have a, a database that tracks various case management activities in child welfare, and we have to share that data with the, the state as far as uh, various outcomes, uh, uh, such as uh, reporting to the child, uh, the child abuse hotline and, and things of that nature. This agreement ensures that we observe uh, um, industry standards, security protocols, and that uh, we protect the data accordingly. Does the board have any questions for Mr. Browning? I'd like to make a motion entering into the CWIS data sharing agreement. Do I have a second? Second. 
second. Roll call. Commissioner Terriani? Yes. Commissioner Cummings? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. 19-0211. Thank you, Commissioner. This is a resolution approving the Human Services Block Grant. Be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby approve the Human Services Block Grant HSBG in the amount of $11,173,672 for fiscal year 2019-2020 as attached here to. Here to speak on this resolution is Bill Browning. This is our, our annual uh, allocation uh, request to, to the state um, regarding services uh, provided through human services such as um, mental health services, drug and alcohol services, homeless assistance services, and uh, intellectual disability. Does the board have any questions for Mr. Browning? I have a couple. Um, I, I'm glad that you brought this to us today, Bill, and thank you for all of your work that you've been doing while I'm here. I do appreciate the, you know, because I know I, I ask a lot of questions, and I, I appreciate your patience uh, with those questions and your, your uh, timely responses. Um, some of the issues that came up when we were out at CCAP that I, I've been concerned with is the uh, medical marijuana. And one of the issues that we talked about with their marijuana task force is um, foster parents having medical marijuana cards and are they allowed to continue to be foster parents? Um, so this has been, you know, a very big issue in regards to your department. Uh, just so you're aware, many, many conversations have happened out at, uh, you know, our, our, our state level with the County Commissioners Association trying to figure out a way to um, get a, you know, work with this. Um, and it's extremely difficult. So are you seeing anything trickling down to your department in regards to those conversations and what you're going to do about these kind of issues? We haven't had that, uh, that issue arise yet. I, I'm sure it's just a matter of time, uh, especially we do kinship uh, foster care as well. It Could would you hang have on to one be second. Could somebody please tell those people out in the hallway that we're having a meeting in here? Can you imagine? I'm sorry, Bill. No, that's okay. Uh, so one of the things that if they have a, a legal prescription for that, we would have to, to ensure that they, they uh, their use is um, restricted, um, at least uh, not around the children. We'd have to make sure it was locked up. But if it's legally prescribed, I, I don't know of any uh, legal remedy that we'd have to prevent that use. But do you have federal funding coming to you? We do have federal funding, 4E funding, for foster care. So how would you r rectify that? Because it's a federal crime. Understood. And I just, uh, at this point, that's something we'd have to get clarification from the state because we have had no guidance from the state on it. We have asked uh, at numerous meetings for some, uh, uh, some clarity, and we haven't had anything yet. There isn't any. That's, that's what I'm going to tell you. There is none. Um, because this was just thrown out there, um, you know the way it was uh, this is this is what we're gonna have to deal with at the county level and I'm not gonna be here anymore so when I go out to CCAP you know I mean I don't know who's gonna take over the conversations out there but um, when I go out there I'm consistently trying to follow up on what we're gonna do in the different departments that this has become an issue and yours is a huge one that's been discussed um, uh, what, along with Area Agency on Aging do we allow the um, home care aides that I actually send to homes do we allow them to have medical cards? So if you have a staffing agency that comes in, are your nurse's aides going to be, you know, going outside to have their medical marijuana while they're taking care of your parents or your uncle or your aunts? I mean, this is an, uh, this is an issue. Another area you have to foresee, you have to watch over. So do you have any idea what you do in that case? It, it would be the same thing. Uh, we're looking for some guidance and we would just have to approach it uh, as we for instance a uh, home care we'd have to approach it as a, any uh, any other medication if uh, if they appear to be under the influence if they appear to to have any kind of uh, deficit based on that we'd have to treat it individually but again uh, we have no guidance from the state and i know that that our, our organizations which are um, sister organizations uh, are subsidiaries of ccap PCYA and we have yet to receive any clarification. You're right, a, a foster care funding, for instance, uh, 
um, is significant from federal uh, standpoint, especially because of the poverty level in, in Lackawanna County. We have one of the highest, it's called penetration rates, which means that uh, the federal participation is very high compared to some uh, other, other counties. So it is a real issue. Well, I mean, I, I would hope that, uh, you know, the public is made aware of this because this is something that, that is not being talked about, and it's a major concern. And it's, it's been argued back and forth uh, at the legislative level, out at the state, uh, as well as with local county off, uh, commissioners uh, at our CCAP uh, meetings because of people, you know, they are very upset. You know, and if I had uh, a nurse's aide coming in to take care of one of my family members, I certainly wouldn't want them going out and getting high and then coming back in to take care of my, my loved one. Uh, but at the same token, um, even if they didn't do that and they had that card, um, they could be a positive after 30 days of, you know, taking the drug. It stays in your system for up to 30 days if you only did it once, but obviously it would be in their system all the time if they had the card. Um, so, you know, uh, this is an issue that really needs to be addressed. And, uh, you know, they say, well, oh, well, these, you know, Oxycontins are, are legal. Yeah, but when you take Oxycontin uh, one pill, uh, you know, every six to eight hours, you're not walking. I mean, I, I have never taken one, I have to admit. However, it, I can't, I, I mean, I've seen people as a nurse, I've seen them on these drugs as, as prescribed, and they're not walking around stoned, okay? Let's just be honest. Uh, not the same thing, okay? Um, you know, I know that there's uh, alcoholics that are, um, you know, they, they do have uh, the ability to work through sometimes, I guess. Um, you know, I've never seen a functioning alcoholic at the work site that I know of. Uh, maybe I have and I didn't know it. I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, I just think that this is uh, something that our state did without even considering the ramifications to the counties and how we're supposed to deal with this, let alone in the sheriff's office and as employers and taking care of children and youth and our elderly uh, population and our veterans. I mean, how are we supposed to deal with all this? And then if they become positive as employees, they have to be fired. That's our policy. So they're let go, period. They're positive. Um, and they are not covered by anything because it's a federal crime. <laughs> it's just a federal crime to have it in your system or, or to, to have it on your possession. And um, you can't work if you're positive. And that's my policy at my place. I won't, you know, regardless of the drug that's in your system, you can't work for me because I, I won't have you taken care of any of my clients while you're on any kind of drug, period, that's it. So I just hope for your sake and for the county's sake that we can come to some kind of resolutions on this. And, you know, I mean, everyone knows my thoughts. I, I don't believe it should have been legal to begin with, but, you know, that's just me. Um, and, uh, you know, I hope that they come to a resolution. And thank you for all your work. It's a lot of work here, folks, that he's done. So. Uh, great job, and I'm really proud of, of all the work you've done, Bill. You're a testament to uh, to our, our county. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I appreciate it. Okay, I'd like to make a motion approving the Human Service Block Grant. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Commissioner Chinese, yes. Commissioner Kines, yes. Commissioner Valley. Yes. 9-0212. Thank you, Commissioner. This is entering into a service agreement with Chester County. Be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby enter into a purchase of service agreement with Chester County for FY19-20 for the purchase of detention beds for juveniles. Here to speak once again on this resolution is Bill Browning. This contract allows us uh, to purchase a detention space uh, or a detention bed if we need it um, in Chester County. The, the number of detention facilities are shrinking. so. Um, we maintain these contracts as a backup in case uh, we're unable to, in case we're maxed out at, at some of the other facilities where we have uh, beds pre-purchased. Okay. I'd like to make a motion entering into a service agreement with Chester County. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Yes. Yes. I'm yes. a question. Just so you I did ask, there's no bed holds, right? No, there's no bed holds in uh, Chester. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Bill. All right, thank you, Commissioner. Nineteen zero two one three. Thank you, Commissioner. Virginia, this, is, this is entering into an agreement. Virginia. 
for the employment advancement and retention of network project. Be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby enter into an agreement with Educational Data Systems Incorporated for the administration and operation of an employment advancement and retention network, E-A-R-N project, providing career and employment services to PA Department of Human Services customers in accordance with EARN program policies and procedures to be effective July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2021. And here to speak on this resolution is the Workforce Development Board Director, Virginia Tirano. Thank you very much. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, the, or the Employment Advancement and, uh, and Retention Network, or what we call EARN project, is a project uh, we received a grant from the Department of Public Welfare to provide extensive case management and uh, job readiness training to individuals that are receiving public welfare that are not quite ready to enter the job market. Um, uh, the way we handle this is we are required by law to procure our services so that we did follow the county procedure. We advertised in the Scranton Times. Um, it was open for approximately three weeks. Once the proposals are received, then they are, they are received in the commissioner's office to Ms. Pantuso. Then they are opened in the economic development office uh, for to ensure that everything is proper and that the person that is applying is eligible to apply. Then they, um, in this case with EARN, we only received one proposal, so it was reviewed by the Executive Committee of the Workforce Development Board, and then it was ratified, and it was approved, and then it was ratified by the full board at their June meeting. Um, I can say that EDSI has held this contract for us for the past two years, and they have met all of their performance requirements. Okay, does the board have any questions? No, I'd like to uh, just commend uh, Virginia again uh, on all of your work because I have stacks of research in my office that she uh, graciously handed over to me on all the things that went into coming up with this so that uh, she can make it appropriately done. And, and I do appreciate your work and Thank you. all that you've done. Thank you. Any other questions? I'd like to make a motion to continue an agreement for the Employment Advancement and Retention for the Network Project. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Commissioner Terriani? Yes. Commissioner yes. Commissioner Yes. 19-0214. Thank you, Commissioner. This is entering into an agreement with RestCare Incorporated. Be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby enter into an agreement with RestCare Incorporated DBA Bright Spring Health Services for the administration and operation of a Lackawanna County Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act WIOA grant to provide comprehensive employment and training services to youth young adult customers to be effective July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2021. Here to speak on the resolution is Virginia once again. Thank you. Um, this is a little bit different. This is Federal Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act funds that flow down from the federal government through the states and then out to local workforce development areas. Um, again, the, uh, with the youth um, funds, we will serve youth between the ages of 12 and 24 years of age. We provide occupational skills training if needed. We can provide on the job training and that is where we would reimburse an employer up to 50% of someone's wage to hire them over a contracted period. And with youth, we can also provide work experience for them to help them build a resume. Um, we followed, again, we are mandated by law to procure these services. We followed the same uh, request for proposal procedure. One thing that was a little bit different with these funds is we did receive two proposals. So there's another step involved. Um, after the proposals are open, they go before a procurement review subcommittee of the Workforce Development Board. And this committee reads the proposals, they rate them, they, they review them, they rank them, they rate them. Then they make a decision and uh, they recommend uh, for approval to the executive committee. The executive committee reviews all of the rankings and the reviews, and then they make a decision. And the executive committee, once that's made, it was ratified again for Res Care Workforce Services for um, approval by the full board. Okay, does the board have any questions for Virginia? I'd like to make a motion entering into an agreement with Res Care Inc. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Commissioner Terriani? Yes. Commissioner Cummings? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. 19-0215. 
Thank you, Commissioner. This is entering into an agreement with Educational Data Systems Incorporated. Be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby enter into an agreement with Educational Data Systems Incorporated for the administration and operation of a Lackawanna County Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act WIOA grant to provide comprehensive employment and training services to adult and dislocated worker customers to be effective July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2021. Here to speak once again, Virginia Toronto. Thank you. Uh, this mirrors the youth funding. This is our funding for uh, to serve economically disadvantaged adults and dislocated workers here in Lackawanna County. Uh, follows the exact same procedure, request for pro proposal procedure. Again, with this, we received two proposals. So it went before the Procurement Review Committee prior to going to the Executive Committee, and they made their recommendation for EDSI. And I, I didn't say this before, ResCare last time had our, has had our contract for two years for youth, and they hit all our, their performance. And again, with EDSI, they've held our adult DW contract for two, the past two years and have met all of their performance requirements. Great. Okay, does the board have any questions? I'd like to make a motion entering into an agreement with Educational Data Systems, Inc. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, Thank Virginia. You. Thank you. 19 0216. Thank you, Commissioner. This is entering into an online data processing service agreement with Infocon Corporation. Be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby enter into a renewal of an online data processing service agreement with Infocon Corporation on behalf of the Lackawanna County Orphans Court, Marriage License Bureau, Register of Wills, and Clerk of Judicial Records, Civil. Monthly service fee of $3,450 to be funded by the Lackawanna County Records Improvement Committee. Agreement is for one year and shall automatically renew every month. And here to speak on this resolution is Register of Wills and Clerk of Orphans Court, Frank Kovaleski, along with Mari Kelly. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, everyone. This is a service agreement for the online uh, free to the public uh, web. Uh, all of our records from uh, the Register of Wills, uh, the Orphans Court, along with uh, Maury Kelly's Civil Division, Civil Division uh, records are online. This is a, a renewable contract that we've had, I believe, since 2005 when we went online. Uh, with all of the records. Uh, the recorder of deeds has some records still out there with this, on this contract. It's a great service to the public. Great service. It's, it's a public service. Yeah, the, Commissioner, I would just like to say I've been a practitioner of the law for 20 some years and all the counties are, have records somewhat available. Most of them use another corporation I'm not gonna mention. But our, our system is by far the best, I think, in the state. Um, the other, other they're freely accessible. You can go on, pull up your deed. You can go on, pull up uh, court records. Uh, if you have a case pending before the court, it's all free. It's accessible to the public. Uh, the other corporation, the counties that use other corporation, you got to pay to even look at the documents. <laughs> it's, it's, it's ridiculous. But I, I think we offer a great service, and I think it's a great program that uh, you guys have done, and you're commendable for for. for and we continue. Done. Maury and myself uh, continue to uh, update our records. They're updated daily along with going back and putting uh, older records on file. So it is a, a good service. It is, again, free to the public. It's paid out of, it doesn't come out of the general fund of the county. It comes out of a user's fee from the recorder of deeds that is mandate, mandated uh, by the statute. So for every deed that's recorded, we get $5. And uh, we are very cautious what we do with our $5. And uh, it has been beneficial <laughs> to uh, the, the taxpayers, you know, because it's 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 a great service and people. We that just use we it. just heard Don's endorsement. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Does the board have any questions? Okay. Okay, I'd like to make a motion, entering into an online data processing service agreement with Infocom Corporation. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Commissioner Cummins. Yes. Commissioner O'Malley. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thank, Thank you very much. 19 0222. 
Thank you, Commissioner. This is an appointment to the Lackawanna Heritage Valley Authority. Be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby appoint the following individual to the Lackawanna Heritage Valley Authority. Attorney Brenda Coble uh, from Music, term to begin immediately and expire on December 31st, 2020. Can I have a motion for the appointment to the Heritage Valley Authority? I'm a, I'd like to motion. Give a second. Yeah, second. Roll call. Commissioner Teriani? Yes. Commissioner Cummings? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. 19-0223. Thank you, Commissioner. This is an appointment to the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby appoint the following individual to the Lackawanna County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Rosemarie Crotty from Scott Township to fill the unexpired term of Attorney Coble, which expires on December 31st, 2021. I'd like to make a motion for the appointment for the Convention Center Visitors Bureau. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Commissioner Teriani? Yes. Commissioner Cummings? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. 19 0217. Thank you, Commissioner. This is a motion to award the interior demolition and restoration of the first floor of the Bank Towers building to Sean Byrne Construction, the lowest and most responsible bidder, at $29,954. Here to speak on this motion is Joe Wexler. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, working with uh, Kevin Shaughnessy, we conducted a walkthrough through the SS SLDHA area. Uh, we had seven vendors attend the walkthrough. Um, the response was only by one vendor, uh, Sean Byrne Construction, for $29,954. Okay, does the board have any questions? How come our friends couldn't take all that stuff down? It, it, we met with Kevin Shaughnessy on site with that, his maintenance crew, it, the complexity of removing the electrical panels and, and electrical uh, wiring and so forth in there. He couldn't handle it. He said it was too big of a job for his uh, crew to do. So. What okay. about the walls and stuff, though? Yeah, they got to take down the walls, and, but there's all wiring in that within the walls. Everything has been, like, wired over there, so it needs to be... It was beyond his uh, his men's ability, he said. So. It has to be put to back to the way it was before. After we start back to the way it was, yeah, yeah. Most of it's demolition, but he just didn't wasn't comfortable using his men doing it. He didn't think that they were up to do, uh, be able to do it. So, within the time frame allotted, also. So. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to award the interior demolition and restoration of first floor of the Bank Tower building by Sean Bryan Construction, the lowest, most responsible bidder of $29,954. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Commissioner Teriani? Yes. Commissioner Cummings? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. 19-0218? Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Commissioner. This is a motion to authorize Nassar Real Estate to list for sale the properties. <laughs> Tax map 2202010007 off Lehigh Road. It's 7.49 acres. Uh, tax map number 2200201000701, Lehigh Road, 66.1 acres. 2200402002, Lehigh Road, 80.75 acres. 2280101023 Freetown Road 8.08 .08 acres 17004050001 Front Street 51.12 acres 18105010001 Smith Street 19.08 acres one this tax number 1800203040 Front Street and Simerson Road 1.51 acres 2130402005 Lehigh Road 30.40 acres 2210301000301 off Lehigh Road 30.40 acres 18105010001 SR435 commercial parcel 2.54 acres. Okay, does the board have any questions? Donnie, this is just to list them. This is not to sell them. That's correct. This is to list them, Commissioner. Yeah, they would have to get offers and they'd have to come back to the Board of Commissioners for final approval. Okay. Correct. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Thank you. I have a question. Go ahead. Can can these like this is acreage? Can any of this be subdivided, or if it if it can be, or no? 
it's as is. What we're selling it as is, I mean, if a developer wanted to subdivide, I don't think the county would go through the expense of subdividing it, but if a developer wanted to subdivide it, that would be up what to them. What if, uh, you know, Joe Schmo comes up and says, you know what, I like this block area here. Can you deduct that from the acreage if it's not sold? That would have one to, acre. That would probably have to be between the person that bought it. Well, we, I don't know. I, I think she's saying if they come to the county, I mean, they, they come to the county yeah. and ask. Yeah, I, I mean, buy they would have to. Acre. That would have to be approved by you guys. I mean, I, I, you know, that's an expense, though. That would have to be an expense that you don't know if the county would want to absorb that or not. Why yeah. would it be an expense? Because you'd have to. Because it has to be. You still have to. We would have to have it surveyed, and then we would have to have maps drawn up, and then we'd have to get approval from the local. I mean, it's a zoning board or a planning commission to, to approve it. So, you know, there, there's expense with that. So, mm -hmm. Well, where are they going to be? Are we going to be advertising these, like, on our I website? I believe so. Well, I believe NASA is going to advertise them there. But are the we also going to do it? I mean, we should have it on our website, we right? We can put a connector, I suppose, onto our website. Yeah, or sure can. A link. Yeah, we can put yeah. a link on, yeah. Well, yeah, let's get rid of <laughs> We're trying to sell property, so, yeah. Let's right. advertise what we can. Very good, yeah. And these properties were all appraised, I think it was last year, by NASA. We, we had them appraised them all, so we have an, an, an appraised value on them. Do we ever figure out why we purchased them to begin with? This was that large transaction under two a minute. Some of them were. I mean, yeah, these these are properties required over decades. I mean, uh, you know, the, some of them were acquired in a, in a purchase years ago. Uh, other ones are acquired just we just had them in the in our in our listing for many years. If the appraisals you know, were done that long ago, and like you said, why why are they, why is it just appearing now? Any idea? I don't know, Commissioner. No, it's because it was brought board. to our attention by Economic Development about a year ago. Yeah. That's what it was. Okay. It was actually stumbled upon. It was something that was that sure was not, yeah. They, we weren't sure. That's why we took the county. Actually, point. owns a lot of properties yeah. throughout the county. So we have there a lot, a lot of them of are scrub lands and things that aren't really worth a lot. But you know, some of them may have some value. So not to us, but somebody else they might. Or be. the person exactly, that maybe yeah, living next door to us. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to authorize Nasser Real Estate to list sale properties. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Okay, yes. 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 Okay. Opportunity for the public to address the board. Uh, Joan Hodewanitz, 101 Penn Avenue, Scranton. Um, the good news about that RFP for renovating the first floor of Bank Towers, the bid that came in at $29,954 was approximately one-third of 321 Development L LP's estimate of what they thought it would cost being $88,456. That's the, the figure they quoted in their lawsuit. So I think um, it's not going to be as bad as you think. It's not free, but on the other hand, it's not the almost $90,000 that uh, um, the owner was estimating. So I thought that was very good news. I was there at the bid opening, so. That doesn't include the carpet removal, though, right? That's the problem. No. Nope. <laughs> but, but yes, you're right. Carpet so. removal can't be that much. Um, and speaking of money, my favorite subject, I still would like to know what the current figure is for the cost of this new government center. Um, and I'm interested in a concrete number, not just a generalization. I understand that expenditures, invoices, and revenues will still be coming in, so the, the number is going to fluctuate. But I think the taxpayers, we're almost nine months into the, this new year for the government center. We should have some kind of feel uh, for what that number is. Do we know what it might be? A ballpark figure? I'll try to get you some kind of a, a close number to okay. next week's meeting, or next time out. And with regard to that question, um, Attorney Fredrickson, I recall you saying that probably no later than September we were going to transfer 200 Adams Avenue and get it back on the tax rolls. Do we have any status on that? Uh, yeah, the, it's scheduled to close on September 30th is the Good. closing date that's set for now. Mm -hmm. Because I would hate to see that drag out into the new year and then we lose all tax revenue for next year. Okay, I mean, it would have been nice if we could have done this last December and then we'd have ha we had it on the tax rolls for this year, but it's understandable it dragged. 
and you could have seen that. We wouldn't have been able to. It's just impossible. Yeah, it but would never be, I, I would hate to see it drag through mm -hmm. till 1 January. That would be awful. So that's good news if that, that gets wrapped up by the end of the year, or by the end of the month. And more news on money. Um, recently, you probably saw in the news that uh, former prison guard Paul Voglino, uh, the charges were dropped, and he has expressed a desire to get his job back. My understanding is when he was charged, he was terminated. And now that the charges have been dropped and he's seeking to be reinstitu reinstituted as a guard at the prison, my question is, is he going to be entitled to back pay? And if so, how much? Because he was terminated and the charges have subsequently been dropped. So he's guilty of nothing. But he was charged. So this is a personnel matter, right, Donnie? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's a personal matter we don't want to discuss, but I mean, th there's a reason that we paid the guards when they were not charged that we, right. we suspended. But, um, you know, it's. The, yeah, uh, could you explain the difference on that? Just a. Uh, well, we had term we, we made a decision. The board of commissioners made a decision to terminate the guards once they were charged. But right. you know, um, in this case, now Mr. Vogelino, the charges were dropped against him, so he's going to apply for his job back, and I'm sure he's going to apply for back pay. And we'll have to process that once we receive the request. Uh, we haven't received a formal request from him or his attorney yet. Is there a possibility he might be entitled to back pay? No. No. That not, I, not that I saw. When that's why we did it that way. There. Th there is a possibility, yes. <laughs> there is a possibility. Yeah, I say I think no. it's personnel at this time. We'll wait till we get okay. receive some kind of request. We'll be watching. We'll be watching because that could be so. a pretty piece of change there. And there was another ex-prison uh, guard, George McHale. Look back in my files, and there was an article on April 5th. Um, he got his job back. Uh, he, I believe he was acquitted. Uh, and he was put on administrative leave. Okay, um, is he back to work? Does anybody know? Uh, that's a personnel matter. Again, I don't know that we should discuss that in public. Okay, yeah. well, the reason I ask is if, he's, if, if he were to be on administrative leave for any length of time, somebody would have to be either pulling overtime or somehow covering his his duty responsibilities, and that's extra money. So I'd be curious about that. The bottom line is, back in uh, February, the Times Tribune published uh, an article about the cost of um, the f fiscal fallout, shall we say, of this prison investigation. And on the salary side, they quoted a figure of $761,833 as of January 31st. And I would very much like to know what that figure is today. Okay, and I understand, you know, that we have some shoes to drop, but I suspect by the end of the year, that figure is gonna be substantially higher. So I will keep asking the question, what is the current salary figure? And I did take a bathroom break about 11 o'clock. So, um, Gary, I assume there's no change to the legal fees? That's right, Joan. Oh, no good, change. good. At least we got that going for us. <coughs> okay. And speaking of jobs, I did a right to know request with all three taxing authorities. Um, and I wanted to know what each taxing authority's hiring policy was. Um, because, you know, looking at this issue of the prison guards and everything else, and for better or worse, I'm a religious reader of the newspaper, I have not much else to do in the mornings anyway. And one of the things I look at is the classifies, because I always look at the legals, and so I kind of browse through the classifies. I look to see if there's something that might interest my nephew uh, for him to move up the career chain. Not that I'm looking for another job. I paid my dues when I was a young woman, and I'm happily retired, and I ain't going back to work for anybody at any, at any salary. However, I look back on my experiences as a young <coughs> graduate um, after I got out of college, and um, for better or for worse, I went off to graduate school and still couldn't get a job in the local area. Uh, certainly had no connections uh, one way or the other in my family. 
Uh, so I did something radical and went into the Army. And by the grace of God, it was a good choice for me. I mean, how else can you retire at 48 with a pension and health care? Okay. And I was able to come home and take care of my mother. And that's the upside. But the downside was my parents and my sister uh, needed my support both physically and financially well before my retirement. And I wasn't in the area because when you're in the military, you're gone. And you just can't go home when you want to. When I say I was gone, remember, I was overseas for 12 and a half years. And uh, my father lost his job in 1978, and my sister became very ill in 1988, and so I didn't retire until 1998. So it bothers me, you know, that um, I, I was gone from the scene. I would have preferred to have had much lesser pay and lesser benefits but been here when my family needed me, okay? But I wasn't. Um, so I look at um, the three taxing authorities, <coughs> and what you have to keep in mind is that the salaries of all government employers are paid by taxpayers, myself, my parents, my sisters, and a whole lot of other people, both in the city and in the county. Therefore, um, government positions other than the elected positions like you people fill and you run for office, but the non-elected positions should be open to all qualified people. Okay, that means both people currently employed and moving laterally or up or down in the system, as well as all other people who qualify who, you know, can apply. But you can't apply for a vacancy unless you know it exists. And for this reason, I did a right to know to get all three hiring policies. And um, I, this short blurb is the county's hiring policy. And short enough that I can read it to you. The county is an equal opportunity employer. When a vacancy occurs, the position may be, not will be, shall be, must be, may be advertised in the newspaper or on the website or both. The department head and HR, Human Resources, review all the applications received. Many applications are dropped off unsolicited on a daily basis and they are also reviewed. Interviews are then scheduled with the most qualified candidates who meet the job's requirements and or specifications. For vacancies in unionized positions, collective bargaining, bargaining agreement terms are followed in filling the internal positions. Okay, I'm not quite sure what that last sentence means, that um, filling a unionized position, collective bargaining supersedes everything else. I'm not quite sure. You'd I have to look you. at the it's context. It's posted. Bumping, bumping, it's posted. bumping. People can bump <laughs> other people, and but it's crazy. At any rate, my philosophy is if it's a taxpayer-funded salary, it should be open to every qualified taxpayer. It can't be because you'll be you'll just get well, – I'm going to wait and let the speaker know the business. Whatever. Okay, let me just finish my philosophy on this. Uh, if there's a, uh, I mean, we're excluding the elected positions. That's a whole different can of worms. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't get the sensing that we aggressively advertise vacancies as they come up, whether they're unionized or not. Okay. Uh, now, uh, when Virginia Tirana was up here, she did talk about the fact that her position was advertised, and that was a good thing to hear. But like I said, I religiously read the newspaper, and I'll see advertisements from other counties for various county positions. I see a lot of school district advertisements other than the Scranton School District for this math teacher or that principal or whatever, okay? Um, and, you know, that bothers me because my life turned out well. Going into the military was the best stupid thing I ever did. Okay, and it's probably God doing it for me. So I have no regrets about that. 
But I would like the younger generations to have the opportunities that I did not have. I would like them, if they are qualified and interested in staying in the, in the local area, being able to apply for vacancies as they come up. Uh, you know as well as I do that if you compare most of the government opportunities here against the private sector, the government pays pretty well and offers a good benefits package. Okay, so, you know, given two people with, you know, equal credentials, you know, everyone should have the opportunity to compete. Now, maybe on the union side, there, there is some kind of issue with bumping up and, you know, internal. But I'm pretty tired of hearing about people who get positions because of the grapevine, okay? Um, and I just want the best qualified person to get it, all things being equal. And I think one of the things that would help is if you aggressively advertise. Now, I know you're not all in favor of the Times Tribune, but I will tell you that a lot, lot of job seekers, rather than go to 20 websites, will check out you know, the classifieds in, in the Times Tribune, especially the Sunday edition, looking to see what kind of vacancies are there. Um, and I, it's just, it's a sore point with me, okay, because I would hope that younger generations don't have to do something like leave the area and join the military because they can't find work at home, even though they're qualified. When I was in uh, the Scranton School District as a kid, you know what they used to tell us? To get a good job, get a good education. Well, I got a darn good education, okay? I have five degrees today, but I'm telling you, as I was going up and graduating, you know, first from high school, then from college, I couldn't even get interviewed, let alone get a position. So just keep that in the back of your head because I'm going to revisit this um, as I get the responses from the other taxing authorities. Also, there was an op-ed in... Um, the Times Tribune on August 27th about having the county collect the city's delinquent taxes and fees. Is that still a viable option? Is anybody talking about I'll that? I'll talk about it under Commissioner's business. Okay. And also, if you can mention it, when you know, and maybe you have it already, any information mm -hmm. on the scheduling of public meetings on the 2020 budget, when and where? Nothing yet. Okay. When you have that, make sure you let us know. It's public to everyone. It's yeah. for everyone. Everyone okay. gets invited. Thank you. Commissioner Cummings? Is everybody done talking? Yeah, there's no one else here. Um, well, Joan, um, the uh, prison investigation, as I said numerous times, time and time and time again, you know, we aren't in charge of that. Somebody else is, so... We're not dragging our feet on that. The longer that takes, the longer these people get paid. Um, I did want to congratulate you on your interview with the uh, for the position at City Council. You did an excellent job, and I would encourage anybody that hasn't seen it to go and watch her interview. She did an excellent job, and uh, dare I say you probably know more than everyone that was up at that day so why they didn't pick you I don't know but probably they were afraid to <laughs> you should have been picked or Marie I believe oh did they pick a lawyer I I don't I I just knew you didn't get it I didn't know who they picked though so yeah they may <laughs> well congratulations you did a great job um so uh, I just want to let you know and as far as the ads in the paper for jobs trust me I've been um it's, it's very difficult. There's so many different factions, and I'll give you one, one example. The Sheriff's Department. The Sheriff is an elected official. Now, we can't tell him how to go about advertising for his staff. And he does not want to advertise for his staff. He wants to utilize the two graduating classes that come out every year and prefers to do it that way. What do we do? can't do anything he's an elected official he can run that department the way he wants to run it uh, there's you know different row offices that they decide in the end how they're going to go about regardless of what you know that's their department they're elected 
they could do what they want in that department. We get this uh, 16, 20 rights, 16, 20 rights. That's all I ever hear is about 16, 20 rights. You know, and they don't even have to accept what other elected officials did. They can just wipe that policy out and restart it because they're an elected official and they have 16, 20 rights. So it's not as easy as everybody thinks when you're dealing with county business. There's all different factions. And, um, you know, I, I run up against brick walls all the time. It's frustrating. It's very frustrating. Um, you know, ads, I, I talked about it in the actual debates, how we do the pol what our policy is, but we have, you know, people apply for jobs here every single day. I mean, I can't say how many uh, applicants come in every day, but I can guarantee you that on a weekly basis, we get at least 50 applications in, in the HR department. It's just a constant, everybody's coming in filling in applications, and they're young people, and they do get positions here. Um, so if the department head, uh, if HR comes in and hands them, well, look, we have, you know, look through the applicants that we got for your specific department, and uh, let us know if there's anybody that, you know, you like. They look through them, and they find, you know, a couple that they want to interview, or they interview all of them. They might find someone in that pile. If they don't, then they go to you know the ones that uh, are advertising or they, they do advertise um, and try and get people that way I mean um, Kurt Camoni was in here he got his job Fran how many did we have oh, 99 applicants we yes, advertised for that right yes ma'am we yes. advertise worldwide and that was for the visitors bureau yes ma'am and there was 99 applicants right yeah so I mean there's it just depends on you know which office it is and if basically if our hands aren't tied to do it so that's why it has to be a generic policy like you read now with the unions um, they have their own set of rules you got to read their contract to see what exactly you know you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do and that ties our hands too um, you know one of the good things that I think we got done f with the unions is part-time workers for our, you know Commissioner O'Malley worked on it I mean I've been asking for 60 of them since I started for the prison but he, he got it done I mean he's got it started so uh, you know but it was because I kept complaining <laughs> <laughs> and you know I mean you we have got <laughs> we have gotten some things done so uh, you know it's just different aspects but that's kind of a long version of it I'm trying to shorten it for you but there's all different kinds of scenarios that can happen as to why it doesn't get advertised um, so I guess the best thing would be to look at who you're questioning that got hired and see what happened in that specific area and why why it occurred that way and um, some answers you're not gonna like and some you will I, I I've run into it all the time um, I think the best thing for you to ask for is who approved it yeah who approved that hire there you go there's your answer go talk to them and ask them why why did you approve that um, the op-ed you can deal with I, I don't even but uh, you know, I don't even know what she's talking about in an op-ed. So that was out there. You said you were going to talk about it anyway. So um, I do want to make sure that young people are applying for jobs and get. You know, I definitely want the most qualified. I think we all do. Um, you know, I, I just hope that that continues to happen. But um, there are some I disagree with, and I make my my points known. Um, I want to again thank the commissioners on their support on the opioid issues there's going to be more coming that I did talk with Commissioner O'Malley about I still have some more uh, things I have to look into and um, maybe we can even go further on on that front that things that uh, I'd like to see happen and uh, you know I, I appreciate the the support of the public in in regards to all that we're doing as well and um, you know I hope to see them out supporting our when is this September 8th uh, yeah is this September 8th well, you can hold it up tonight. Sure. This actually, Doug showed it already. September 8th. And um, I'm glad to see that we're getting rid of those properties that, that we didn't really need. I don't know why we had them to begin with. Um, you know, I just, there's a lot of things that I we found here that we weren't sure why they occurred, but they did. And, um, you know, I hope uh, everybody had a great summer. And uh, I hope the kids have a great day back to school. I don't know. I know I used to be excited about going back to school, but I don't know if they are today. But uh, <laughs> at least I, clear, I, yeah. I got bored of the summer already. But uh, and thanks, Joan, for always coming and asking us uh, such great questions. Have a good day.
Commissioner Notary. I'm good. Joe, what was that last question you were asking? The very last one. What was the last one I was said I was going to answer. Uh, she. About no, the no, 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 the one before that. On collecting taxes. Uh, about the city. Oh yeah, um, Joan. Just like the viewing audience, they know. Like, <laughs> I met with Ron Kolajeski three or four years ago, or even further back, even when as the minority, and we talked about this forever, and we have an understanding now why we couldn't actually have that opportunity with the city. Um, we are, they are trying to set up a meeting, hopefully the next couple weeks with the administration. And um, that's basically where we're at with that. Okay. Um, okay, let me get to the, this past weekend was great. The weather was fabulous. 44th annual La Festa Italiano. Congratulations to the committee. They did an incredible job. Our new sidewalks, great. No, no holes, no nothing brand new. Great opportunity for everyone to go out and enjoy the courthouse. And the weather was incredible with a beautiful breeze. And like you said, congratulations to the committee, La Festa and Chris DiMatteo, and to our staff for Buildings and Grounds. Kevin Shaughnessy and his staff did an incredible job making sure that everything was clean and all the other volunteers that were involved. Um, also, this coming Saturday is the Lackawanna County Cross Country Invitational McDade Park, 9 a.m. There's five, race, five races, two freshman race, one varsity B and two varsity races. Great races. I think they go up until around 11:30 when they start to give out the awards. Please come on out. Great to support the kids. And this is like this is 20 some districts that are involved, like from New York all over the place. It's amazing. Um, September 11th, uh, McDade Park, 8 a.m. We're going to be having the 9/11 memorial service. Please come on back. It's it's a quick service because it's in the morning, so people are able to come out. I think it's on. I think that's. Uh, I think that's a Wednesday, I think. So please come on back. It's at McDade Park right below the Sleigh Riding Hill. Um, September 13th, Lackawanna County Commissioners having their blood drive here. Um, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. in the, the Globe Store. Please come to 123 Wyoming Avenue. September 14th, this is great. For all the parents out there, bring your kids up to emergency services. We're going to be having Heroes Day, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., Meet law enforcement, EMTs, firemen, free hot dogs, drinks, coloring books, you name it, they have it. It's a great day. It's just great for the children to get to know who are the people that are out there on the front lines protecting and saving us every day. September 20th, we're going to be having our senior health fair at PNC Field. Come on up, see PNC Field, hopefully home of the Rail Riders and the champions of this year, if everything keeps going the right way. Um, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., I think we're going to have, was it Hoagies? What do we usually have? Uh, we usually have some kind of, of lunch for yeah, some kind of lunch for the seniors. They'll be able to get their flu shots, blood pressure, all kinds of giveaways, and it's just a great day. Please come on out, and we'll try to help you with your health needs. September twenty first, we're going to be having a free fishing derby up Merley Sanowski Park, eleven a.m. to two p.m. And you can call Parks at nine six five seven zero nine six three six seven six four. Anyone interested, if they'd like to come out. And um, September twenty fifth to twenty eighth. We're going to have tire recycling at the Recycling Center, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. So please come on out and Friday, 8 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. on Saturday. So please come on out to the Recycling Center if you have some old tires. Um, I'd like to wish all the kids good luck in their upcoming um, sports year and um, in their academic year. I want to wish them all good luck. It's you know it's the beginning of the school year, and um, um, I'd like to wish everyone a happy, safe rest of the summer. we got a little bit left, so... Thank you, everyone. Thanks for viewing in. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.